I want to keep things simple for my family. I've heard that many, many times when I sit down with clients to design an estate plan for them. Keeping it simple for the family is a great goal, but things get complicated when the people I'm talking to own property in multiple states. So sometimes they have their home in Pennsylvania, but then they have a vacation property on the Jersey Shore or in Delaware, or maybe their snowbird property in Florida. When they have property in multiple states, there are special considerations that come up. I'm Patrick Cauley. I'm with Keystone Elder Law in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and I want to go through how you can deal with a plan uh, for property that is in multiple states. This all comes down to probate. That's the court-supervised process uh, to distribute property of a deceased person. The property has to change hands. The law gets involved because this is this is valuable stuff. So that you know, we want to make sure that the process is followed. So your will goes through probate, or if you don't have a will, your estate goes through probate. Now, if you own property in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey, or Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Florida your estate, your will, will have to go through probate in all of those states. Now that's going to get costly because you're probably going to have to, your family will have to to hire lawyers in each of those states. There are court fees. It can be very uh, timely, especially Florida, California. These are states that are notorious for having very long probate processes. Uh, It gets very expensive. So how do people avoid probate when they have multiple uh, properties in different states? Well, there are a few ways, and each has pros and cons. One that I see most often, people come in and they've already done this, they will simply add the child they want to inherit the property onto the deed as a co-owner. So the benefit of doing that, I suppose, is that there's no probate when the parent passes away because the co-owner child becomes the 100% owner of the property. Okay. There are significant drawbacks to doing that. What happens if the parent uh, does a a new deed, files and records a new deed, uh, naming a child as a 50% owner, and then the parent needs skilled care, long-term care, and needs Medicaid to pay for it in the next five years? That's a long time. Lots of things can happen, especially once you get into retirement years. If that's the case, that gift of half the property to the child Uh, becomes a penalty for getting Medicaid to pay thousands and thousands of dollars a month for long-term care. So that's one uh, drawback of simply giving property away to a child. There are lost uh, tax opportunities as well. You can Google step up in basis when you gift a property like your home or a vacation property to a child. uh, They lose what's called a step up in basis, which when they go to sell it could mean they're going to have a big tax bill. Uh, That's that's another video for another day. Um, And then finally, another drawback of of simply putting a child onto the property is what happens if the child gets into financial difficulties, uh, gets into bankruptcy, gets into lots of credit card debt, maybe gets into a car accident uh, and the insurance doesn't cover what the child uh, now owes somebody, or even a divorce. You never know how these things could play out. Any of these troubles become your troubles as a co-owner of the property. So that's a really risky way to do it, simply giving uh, half the property to your child by recording a new deed. A much better way to to handle property in multiple states is to set up a living trust. You you deed the property over to the trust. The trust says when you're gone, who gets the property. Uh, It lays out all kinds of of tax language. You can preserve, in some cases, that step up in basis. And most importantly, you don't have to go through probate. Uh, So that is, you can exercise a lot more control over the circumstances with a trust as opposed to just simply giving away the property uh, through, through adding a name to the deed. And that's really the way to go. There are so many more details that go with all of this, but I wanted you to be aware that when you have property in multiple states, now your estate is a little more complicated and it requires some extra care.